we'll title this tape uh, Planet Earth About to be Recycled Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us Planet Earth About to be Recycled Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us Do you remember the Heaven's Gate cult? I do. I was one year old. And I was a precocious one year old. Or perspicacious. Or uh, perspirant. I was very sweaty. Had a lot of baby fat. I remember the headlines on my old school tube TV. A religious group performs mass sewer slide. Uh, an anonymous tip. Who do I talk to? Uh, okay. This is regarding what? This is regarding a mass fair, I was not potty trained, but I remember shitting myself the moment I saw this footage. It smacked me in my retinas. The tale of the Heaven's Gate cult is truly harrowing. There are many twists, many turns. If you don't know a lot about this, or even if you do, I recommend watching. It's going to be a really interesting little time here. Now, like most cults, Heaven's Gate starts off as a, a simple religion. And many of the details of this religion's strange beliefs make you wonder how anyone could have possibly fallen for this and drank the flavor aid that this cult was serving, guys. That's a Jonestown reference from another cult with a mass sewer slide. The silliness, the craziness, and the completely avoidable tragedy that ended the Heaven's Gate cult will be discussed in today's video. And this is how Heaven's Gate became one of the most infamous cults in the world. So we'll start with the leaders of this cult. Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles. They were the dynamic duo that together led this religious group and its members to their ultimate demise. Marshall, as a young man, was just like any typical dude. He went to university and even served in the United States Army. He went to school to pursue a career in education. Maybe he wanted to become a teacher or something like that, I, I assume. <laughs> And teaching makes sense to be his calling because he did share his enlightenment with his dedicated followers later in his life. He would never complete his education, however, as his father would pass away and dealing with this turmoil, he abandoned his education due to a deep depression. This was in 1971. In 1972, while Apple was visiting a sick friend in the hospital, a nurse entered the room and upon making eye contact with the nurse, an instant connection was made. This was Bonnie Nettles, an older woman, older than Marshall. Bonnie Nettles, who was 45 at the time, Marshall was 41, was married and had four kids when she met Marshall. And even though Bonnie was working as a nurse, you know, doing modern medicine stuff and science and all that smart shit that people have to learn to be able to get those jobs, she still had dreams of the occult. She would visit fortune tellers here and there, have her palms read, maybe ponder the orb occasionally. She was often interested in these prophecies that she would receive from these charlatans. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't, I think it's all crazy. Anyways, in fact, in one of these readings, Bonnie was told she would meet a tall, mysterious man with light hair and a fair complexion, similar to the traits of Marshall. Mr. Applewhite, that's crazy. What a, sp what a specific reading. After meeting, Marshall and Bonnie would meet up frequently and they would discuss mysticism and other similarly taboo topics, especially taboo for people who are children of the church or religious people. They, they both were. The continued meetings emboldened both Bonnie and Marshall's interest in the mystics, and all of this would result in the inevitable deterioration of Bonnie's marriage. After all of this, Bonnie would attempt to contact dead spirits in seances. Crazy! She would study theosophy, the system that doesn't believe necessarily in one singular true religion, but uh, more so in the underlying truths that are strung throughout many religions. Crazy! I don't know, actually, I just wanted to say that again. She also studied astrology. <laughs> Insane! Astrology, as you guys probably unfortunately know, relies on the positions of celestial bodies, and it believes that these positions are divine communication, which, fine, if you believe that, whatever, I guess, um, you know. I believe I'm the Muffin Man from Jury Lane. Now, aspects from all the things that she found interest in would become foundational to her and Marshall's future ambitions in the Heaven's Gate cult. Seances, theosophy, astrology. Cringe. Now, after enough meetings between Bonnie and Marshall, the discussions that they had came to the same natural conclusion that any couple people 
would have when they have such deep, meaningful, and passionate conversations over a long period of time so consistently. They both agreed that they were beings known as divine messengers. And after this, you could probably imagine led to the creation of Heaven's Gate. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. They're back, baby. Back on the channel. Rocket Money. Yes, sir! Rocket Money is the all-in-one finance platform that has revolutionized the way that I save cash and spend it. It's like having a personal financial advisor on your phone at your fingertips. It's cool. Before we go any further, you can click the link in the description, rocketmoney.com forward slash Oompa. Get some premium features by just watching this video. You can go try it. Okay. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel unwanted subscriptions. I have so many that I just forget about. No more wasting time on the phone, etc. A simple tap, Rocket Money does it for you. Rocket Money can also negotiate with service providers on your behalf to lower your bills, which is wild. <laughs> Every time I read that, I'm it's crazy. Um, setting a budget has never been easier with Rocket Money. It monitors your spending by category and sends you notifications when you exceed that spending. I need that a lot because I spend a lot of money on uh, Chinese stuff, Chinese equipment. It also helps you visualize your spending and earning, um, you know, your in and out to maintain your, your, your balance. It's like having your very own financial coach guiding you to your goals. Also, did I mention that Rocket Money keeps an eye on my credit cards for me and yours as well? It alerts you of changes that impact your credit score and gives you insight on how to improve it. There's also smart savings. Rocket Money will automatically deposit money into your accounts to help you build your net worth. And on top of all that, it gives you a very simple and full financial dashboard that includes your cash, debts, investments, crypto retirement accounts, and even certain collectibles. It's incredible. Take control of your finances, join 3.4 million members, and use Rocket Money today. Go to the link in the description or rocketmoney.com forward slash Oompa. You can try Rocket Money for free or unlock even more premium features with the subscription. It's time to get your money right, fellas. And the one woman watching, thank you all so much. Both Nettles and Applewhite decided that they were chosen to fulfill a biblical prophecy and were both given a higher level mind than others in the year 1972. This all began with a pamphlet saying that Jesus was reincarnated as a Texan and it heavily implied that Applewhite was Jesus and Bonnie was God and the fact that they were not only chosen but they were both witnesses to the book of revelations and they knew of the end times and when the world would end. This is powerful stuff. Fuck getting the lotto numbers. Imagine knowing this shit's all gonna end. That'd be dope. But we're still here though and they both died. <laughs> so they were wrong. Bonnie and Marshall would go from church to church spouting that they were the two or the UFO two who would one day be killed and resurrected and in the view of other people be transported to an alien spaceship. This whole thing would be known as the demonstration. It took two years for them to finally gain a single follower. The first one was known as Sharon Morgan. What a fool. This is like just full of red flags off the bat. I cannot even believe this shit. But Sharon's time with Heaven's Gate wouldn't last long because a month later she left them and returned to her family. <laughs> and also shortly after that, Applewhite and Nettles were arrested and charged with credit card fraud because they used one of Sharon's credit cards, <laughs> which is awesome. So they were, Insane and also fraudsters. Classic cult moment. In the end, the charges for the fraud were dropped, but after a routine checkup on Apple White, it was found that he had stolen a rental car that he was still in possession of. And he was arrested for six months following that charge. And in early 1975 was released and immediately went back to his love, Bonnie. This is where things changed a little bit because Marshall and Bonnie decided to, instead of just tell everyone that they were Jesus and God, they moved onto another more simple and easier to digest way of gathering followers. They really started to figure out this whole cult proselytization thing. So what was this audible they called that they switched up their game on? Well, they said that aliens from above were contacting them and the aliens wanted like-minded followers to hear what they had to say. And they weren't just Jesus and God, but they were aliens who possessed Jesus and God. So it's like, it's like, it's, it makes more sense to me personally. And like me, many normal people in the 70s thought that this was a, a better thing because they started gaining followers. Eventually, 25 fools joined their crew. They even gave themselves cool stage names like Bo and Peep and Doe and T. With all this, they were ready to continue recruiting more followers. What a beautiful thing. 
the growth of a young cult. They began to state to their followers and literally anyone who would listen that they were going to take part in an experiment that would bring them to a higher evolutionary level. All right, sign me up, dude. I'm interested now. I'm interested now. I, I want to evolve a little bit, okay? Now, of course, since Bonnie and Marshall were divine messengers, they, they had already achieved this higher level of evolution, but they, they wanted to let their followers know that, that that's how they that that's how they could get there is by following them. And these goobers successfully convinced hundreds of people to leave all of their worldly possessions behind and travel in tents and sleeping bags all across the country to continue to share their message. They created a specific set of behavioral guidelines, such as banning all sexual activity and the use of drugs. It is seen now that this was their final push to go from insane roaming social group to an actual religion. This was the beginning of the actual religion, an organized religion. A little side note, it's crazy to me how easy it is to just convince people of stuff, especially back in the, the day, because you couldn't just Google it. I mean, look at me. I'm convincing you right now. You're believing it right now. You're looking into my eyes, believing the things that I'm saying. You can get what I have by just, you know, letting me you or whatever i don't know give me all your your credit cards so heaven's gate stocks begin to rise the group is on its come up they employed many new tactics to try and attract suckers or followers whatever subscribers whatever the f you want to call them i call mine subscribers isn't that right check out this dope recruitment flyer that they <laughs> that that act was real <laughs> reproducing space aliens, including mammalian and reptilian, use Earth's human assembly for their own interests, and have been for thousands of years. They intentionally keep humans falsely programmed or in the dark, primarily their religious concepts. I like this part here. This part would actually maybe convince me if I was really stupid and had a flat mind in the 70s. A very accelerated classroom for birthing, incarnating, is now being offered for the third and last time in this civilization by those representatives from the 1975-19 76 yield to the remainder of the souls that have yet been saved from the previous time by the next level <laughs> what this video game shit i'm all in. i'm all in dude this is baller now like most cults do this cult targeted people that were vulnerable people that are searching for meaning in their lives purpose etc it makes sense it's a it's a common trait for cult leaders and, and their uh, modus operandi for gathering goobers is to just get people who will be the easiest to persuade. And to be fair, if you provide a convincing enough way to say that you found the true way of being and you found the answer to, to life's biggest mysteries, why wouldn't people want to, to join, you know? And, and it, it seems like they did a pretty good job. I make jokes or whatever, but this is, it, 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 this was a thing for a reason. I'm here to offer you as these are an opportunity to know the truth so that if you can connect with it at any level, then you might survive. Heaven's Gate did an excellent job of building relationships with individuals who didn't have a sense of belonging and they gave them one. They gave them a sense of belonging, um, understanding, et cetera. They were, it, was, it was a community, just like Rajneesh Param and every other cult we've talked about. One unique thing about the cult as well is that there was a focus on one-on-one -on -one conversations between the divine messengers and the followers with people who were legitimately interested in the teachings. So these were very, very just loyal people, right? It wasn't like a, a guy orating to a, a crowd of people. It was a guy talking one-on-one -on -one to just a couple hundred people. Talk about parasocial relationships. I mean, that's cringe, dude. Don't, haven't they heard of that shit? At the same time that Marshall and Bonnie were both building extremely close and tight-knit relationships with their followers, they ensured that these followers could have no other outside relationships. Uh, and they did this by isolating them. They didn't have access to family, friends, or anyone who might have a chance to convince them that this religion was wrong. People in the world who thought that I had completely lost my marbles, they're not right. By being the only people that the followers were truly allowed to interact with on a consistent basis, um, it allowed Bonnie and Marshall to command a level of control over them that was built on total dependency is just super unhealthy. These people were restricted to their own little baby community. They had no access to outside beliefs to cross-examine with their own. And, uh, you know, that was it. The cult was the way the cult was. We had to have a structure. And that structure then immediately became an infringement on doing what I want to do when I want to do it. 
another thing that Bonnie and Marshall did to really rein in their followers was uh, teach them of Earth's imminent destruction and what they called being recycled and the fact that Heaven's Gate offered the only way of evacuating before this happened. And as you can imagine, it's, uh, you know, that's the, the domino. That's, what, that's where it falls. Um, you create fear. You offer a means of alleviating the fear. Classic cult behavior. You create the disease, manufacture the cure. Big Pharma. And by the way, they insinuate that Bonnie is God. Marshall is the reincarnation of Jesus, and Bonnie is God. And T is my heavenly father. Gave me birth into that kingdom before this civilization began. Uh, and Marshall calls Bonnie T, by the way. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Christianity, for example, relies on the intention from God to create humanity in his image. And what you believe or feel about your religion is determined by which denomination you follow or one would follow. To take something that's ubiquitous like that and put it through the lens of extraterrestrial contact, it's a massive leap for a lot of people. I don't really understand why they did, did they think that they were going to make it more believable. They were going to entice people from 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 the, a Christian background of a faith a Christian faith background to join their cult by saying aliens were real. Because, um, I mean, that that might get me, to be honest. I like aliens a lot, and I think they're funny looking, and they got big heads and big black eyes. They were fascinated by UFOs and everything extraterrestrial. You can imagine that. This all comes from the belief that their idea of heaven is an actual physical place in our universe that had multiple ways uh, to get there, but only reachable by dedicated followers, obviously, who had prepared their souls to leave the uh, their Earth vessel. And once you went to Tella, aka <laughs> the evolutionary level above human, you would no longer need to eat. You would find nourishment by absorbing pure sunlight. You would no longer need to bone and have sexual relations with people. And you would live in a state of pure, constant, and unrelenting bliss. God, that sounds incredible. Sign me up, heads. They also believe that what the Bible calls God was just a highly developed extraterrestrial, a boozorg, a zeta reticuli from the, uh, from the, um, wait, zeta reticuli from, zeta reticuli is the system, a being from the zeta reticuli. That's it, yeah, boozorg from zeta reticuli. <laughs> I got my extraterrestrials mixed up, guys. They also appropriated some paranormal and supernatural beliefs into their system. Spirits, possessions, things like that, seances. They called them walk-ins. It's a thing where a spiritual being enters a human body that was abandoned by its original soul, which is crazy. There was even an evil race of aliens called the Luciferians who were responsible for all of the false and corrupt religions of Earth, and that these Luciferians had access to spacecraft, time travel, and telepathy, and they used holograms and fake miracles to manipulate people. Truly unhinged, nonsensical shit. I mean, these people was crazy as f they believed that the reason we were here was to perfect ourselves, and once we did that, we could graduate to the next level. So, you know, upgrading your character. And how to do this, you could either be physically picked up onto a Tela aircraft, where you would then be transferred to your next body, which you get a next body. How baller is that? Or just simple death by natural causes could allow you to experience a transference to the Tela, um, or an accident, or also random violence. There's a lot of ways to do this. Plus, a funny little thing that this cult did, any outside persecution that led to death, similar to what happened in Waco, or Ruby Ridge, or, well, that wasn't a cult, but, you know, whenever people get murdered, that could get you to go to heaven as well. <laughs> and finally, this one's important, willfully leaving the body in a dignified manner, that's important, would also allow you to level up. And this was the method that was employed at the end of the Heaven's Gate cult. And thus begins the decline of heaven's gate towards the end of heaven's gate they had consistent media coverage they were taking the world by storm yet they still had one more trick up their sleeves in october of 1996 the group decided to rent out a large home called the monastery which was a 9200 square foot home located in rancho santa fe california the home was seven thousand dollars a month in the 90s, that's crazy. They got that bitch, and in the same month, they purchased alien abduction insurance that would cover all 50 of their members. Bro, what the fuck? It was a payout of $1 million per person that would cover abduction, impregnation, or death by aliens. I mean, talk about easy money for an insurance company. I will gladly sell you alien abduction insurance.
And finally, between the 19th and 20th of March, 1997, Mr. Applewhite made a tape called Doe's Final Exit, stating that a mass sewer slide was the only way for the cult to evacuate this Earth. And they had to get to their spacecraft, which was conveniently hiding behind the comet hale -Bopp. And that was going to be gone soon and would lead to the closure of Heaven's Gate. With this, Marshall convinced his 38 followers to prepare a ritual sewer slide so that everyone's souls would board this delicious craft. By dying, the UFO would absorb their souls and take them to the Tella, a level of existence beyond human. The love, whatever the fuck it is, it's not real. When the time came, every member videotaped a farewell message and then stated that they were ready to board the ship. The cult was ready to board the ship. How do you do that? How do you board a distant ship? behind a large comet. Well, of course, by sewer slide pact, my friends. To end themselves, the poor, poor followers of this cult took a mixture of phenobarbital and applesauce, and then had a, either a pudding or vodka chaser, a delectable last meal, if I do say so myself, and then they covered their heads with plastic bags to in induce asphyxiation. And of course, they had an armband of honor that read Heaven's Gate Away Team. Incredible. And after each member would die, another member would arrange the bodies with a purple cloth covering their face for, for privacy of their journey or whatever. All in all, 39 people, 21 women, and 18 men between the ages of 26 and 72 died and didn't do anything but die. And they were three groups over three days with the remaining participants cleaning up after each death. All in all, everyone died. There were no survivors. Applewhite was believed to be the third to last person to die. And when police finally got to the house to check everything out, there were 10 corpses and they would smell terrible and they were all rotting. Everyone was cremated. This is terrible, dude. It's terrible. Everyone boarded the spaceship. No one was, you know, crazy stuff. These people genuinely believe that there was a spaceship behind the hale -Bopp comet uh, that was ready to accept passengers that were willing. And by God, that's that's just insane. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed.